now that you've gone through and learned how to create multi-view drawings by hand uh, and sketching them out by hand, we're going to go through and learn how to make multi-view drawings in Fusion 360. Uh, in order to create a multi-view drawing in Fusion 360, we're going to need a 3D model with which to make that multi-view drawing, which is what we have here in the bottom left-hand corner. We're going to make this part, which you've seen before. So there's a, a number of different ways you could make this. Um, you could use additive, you could use subtractive, you can use a combination of both. Um, so I'm going to show you the way that I would make it. You are welcome to use any methodology you'd like as long as you get to the same end result. Uh, so I have a new untitled document open here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new sketch. I'm going to click on this back plane. And one thing I want to point out before I do that is if you look at your view cube in the top right hand corner, you can see what views you have. So this is your front, this is your right, and this is your top view. If I look at my drawing, or my isometric with dimensions, from looking here from the bottom left corner at the part, that is going to be what I want my front view to be. So I'm going to start sketching from that view. So I'm going to click on this back uh, plane here, and notice my view cube comes up and shows it as the front view. Um, if you mess this up and this doesn't show as the front view and your front views don't match, I'm going to show you how to fix that later, but it's a little easier if you start out that way. Um, on the, on uh, Fusion 360, um, if, you, if you're using a mouse and you click and hold the scroll wheel, that will allow you to pan around the screen, so I usually do that to kind of drag my origin here in the bottom left corner. Um, and I'm going to use a subtractive method to go ahead and make this. So I'm going to make the overall box that this part would fit in. And I'm starting here from the front view. So I'm basically going to sketch this overall width and this overall height as a uh, two-point rectangle. Uh, my overall height is 2.5. And my overall width is also 2.5. And then my depth is going to be 3.5. So I'm going to grab a two-point rectangle. There's a couple different ways I can do this. Um, I have the two-point rectangle up here. Um, I can click R on my keyboard, and that'll start the rectangle command. The other option that I have is if I hit S on the keyboard, that gives me my shortcuts, and I already have two-point rectangle and circle and line here, so that's handy. But I can also type in any command that I want to find as well, so if it's not on this list or not easily available up here, that's kind of a shortcut to do that. So I'm going to click on two-point rectangle. I'm going to start in my origin here, and then I'm going to make a 2.5 inch by 2.5 inch square. Hit enter. I'm going to finish that sketch. Click E for extrude. I could also have found extrude up here or in that shortcuts menu. And I'm going to drag out here just to start this, but I want this to be 3.5 inches deep. If I go back and look at my part here, that's my 3.5 inches by 2.5 by 2.5 wide there. So I'm going to hit enter. That makes my box. Now I can start anywhere that I want to um, to start removing some of these cutouts. Um, I think for me, I'm going to start on the front face here and cut away this big chunk to start out with. So um, the I can kind of look at the heights here. So this height here is 1 inch, and the overall is 2.5. So I know that this height here is 1.5. And I already know my width is 2.5, so I need to take that chunk out of there. So I'm going to go back into Fusion, create a sketch on this front face, hit R on my keyboard for two-point rectangle, start in that corner. I'm going to snap there to the width, and it snaps to that 2.5, and then I'm going to make my height 1.5 and hit Enter. Finish my sketch, click E for extrude, select that shape, and I'm going to push back to start the cut. Notice my distance is negative. So um, if I go back and look at my drawing here, um, my overall uh, depth is 3.5, and this chunk back here is 1, so I know that depth uh, needs to be cut to 2.5 there. So I'm going to select that and do negative 2.5 and hit enter. And that's cut away that chunk. Um, so I also need to create this top and bottom cut out here. doesn't really matter what order I do it in. Um, so I'm going to go down to this front face here to do this cut out. I could also create a sketch on this top face and do the same thing. But um, I think I'll create it here. Um, it's a half inch wide and then the height of this uh, are one inch here and it's going to be centered or one inch from this left hand side. So I'll create a sketch. Two point rectangle again. Click on here this time. And for right now I don't really care where this sits. I'm just going to click somewhere. I know that I want my height to be one and I know that I want my width to be 0.5. So I'm going to hit enter. Now obviously this isn't centered on there so I need to dimension this so that it does sit in the center. So I'm going to hit D on the keyboard for dimension. 
dimension is also up here and once again you can use S for shortcuts menu as well. And I'm going to dimension from the edge of that rectangle I just created to this edge and I want that to be one inch. So if I go back to my drawing I can see that that width there is one inch and that places it right in the center. I'm going to finish my sketch, E for extrude, click on that and push back and then I need to double check here and it looks like the depth of that cutout is 1.5. So highlight that, negative 1.5, hit enter and that creates that cutout for me. And then the last thing I need to do is take the cutout at the top. Um, so once again I could sketch on this top plane or this side plane here. Um, for me I think I'll click on this side plane create a two-point rectangle just you see that uh, cross right there that means I'm I'm right on the top part of that line so I'm gonna click there and then just drag this out I'm gonna go ahead and place it I haven't dimensioned it at all so I'm gonna click escape to get out of the rectangle command click D on my keyboard for dimension I want to drag that dimension out and I'm gonna place it drag this dimension down and I'm gonna place it obviously those aren't correct so I'm gonna pull up my design here. I know this width of this should be 1.5 and the height should be 0.5 so I'm going to double click on this one. Uh, hit escape real quick, sorry about that. Get out of the dimension command. Double click on that, that should be 0.5 and enter. And then double click on that dimension, it should be 1.5 and enter. Now it looks like it's close but I'm pretty sure it's not actually quite centered. If I look at my drawing here, um, it should be 0.5 inches from this left hand side of the part. So I'm going to grab the dimension command again, grab it up here in the menu. I'm going to click from the edge of that rectangle to this edge, drag that up. And as you can see, it's really close. So to the, to the naked eye, it looks like it's right where it's supposed to be, but it's actually not quite right. So I'm going to type in the 0.5 and that shifts it over. And now that rectangle is positioned where it should be. I'm going to finish my sketch, click E for extrude, select that start pushing back but instead of typing in a dimension I'm gonna go over to my extrude panel here and under extent I'm gonna select all and that's gonna uh, cut all the way through now if I went in later and changed the dimension to this to make it deeper it would still extrude all the way through instead of to the only to the one inch that I typed in so I'll hit OK so now that has finished my part uh, now notice if I go back to my drawing front view is always here right view is always here so my drawing here matches my fusion part and you can see that I have my front view so if I click on my front view it's going to show my front view if I click on my right view it's going to show my right and then top so the question is what happens if um, let's say that uh, instead of the front view showing right it looks like this and it's saying that this is your front view and this is your right view so um, let me actually just go to this view here so what if you got something like this where it says this is your front view and this is your right and this is your top. You need to fix that. So I'm going to use my view cube. I can drag it around, um, click on the front and kind of maneuver until I get to what I want to be my front view, which is this is what I want my front view to be. So I'm going to right click on my view cube, go to set current view as, and then select front. Notice now my view cube changes back to show this is the front. If I go to a ISO view, it shows right and top as it should. And then once you go to the ISO view that you like that shows front, right, and top, you can also right click on the view cube, set current view as home, and fit to view. And now when you hit the home button, that'll send you back to this position. So if I just drag this out of here, click home, it's going to send me right back to that uh, position. So now that I have this part done, I need to save it. So over in my data panel, if you can't see your data panel, um, it's the top left hand button in Fusion. I'm going to open that up. I want to go to my PLTW project, IED. Um, I'm going to create a new folder called 1.2.3. Hit enter. Double click on that 123 folder and then I'm going to go and save this part. I'm going to call it 1.2.3 part and save. And now I have my part saved that I can go and make a multi-view drawing from.